We're back on The Big Show. It's Alex Belfield talking to my favourite people. And my favourite programme on TV, well, I mean, it's that channel, about 900, and you get a 10-minute free view. But my other favourite channel is Come Dine With Me. And the man who's responsible for its huge success is Dave Lamb. How are you? I'm very well, Alex. How are you? Well, I'm annoyed with you, really, because you're one of the biggest stars on telly and not many people have heard of Dave Lamb. They've heard your voice and they know what you say. Is that annoying? It's not annoying. It's lovely. It's very nice to be uh, anonymous. I could be uh, creeping amongst you at any moment. You don't know. I could be anyone. (laughs) Creepy amongst us or creeping? Creeping, but, you know, sometimes (laughs) creepy. Help me with that programme because I love it. You've got this new DVD out as well, of course, the tasty bits have come dying with me. There's always a fracas, there's always trouble, and there's always boring people, but you manage to make them entertaining. Is that down to you, then? (laughs) <laughs> well, the whole thing is scripted. I mean, I, you know, they've shoot hundreds of hours of footage so they can press it down to their 30 minutes or their hour, whichever they're doing, and they have to write the script. They have to tell the story in the pictures. So they have the, when I come in, I come in at the last minute, read out the script to the pictures, but they let me do little bits of ad-libbing here and there. So that's, that's how it works. Where's your comic timing come from? Because more than anything, you know how to make funny, don't you? Well, I've, I've been in comedy uh, all my professional career since I uh, formed a, uh, a, a sketch team on the campus radio station when I was at Warwick University. So I've been, I've been doing comedy, writing, and, writing it and performing it for, well, since 91. So I've, th- that's where. And also, you're one of those that's made it your own. I mean, you, this could have been one of those flops that just had a couple of episodes and nobody cared about, but it suddenly grew, didn't it? And I think that was down to the writing. It certainly wasn't down to four people sat around a table eating. <laughs> well, when I first went in, they got they got me to audition because I was a writer performer. And in the early days, I had much more input in the script. I mean, I added all the asides and all this sort of stuff. And then uh, gradually the style began to emerge and then people started writing for that style. So, uh, yeah, there is, you know, there is a, a certain amount of comic input. From it me, doesn't yeah. really give you much faith in TV people that they don't really know what they're doing. It's all an accident, really, isn't it? Well, no. I mean, well, life is an accident, isn't it? Life is a complete accident. There's no, uh, there's no scientific method, and uh, a lot of subjectivity involved. But you know, I think that you know they get some fantastic characters. They cast it really well. They put people together who are going to clash, but not in too obvious a way, so that it doesn't appear to be all set up. Mm. And they just uh, let give people just enough rope to hang themselves with, and I think it works really <laughs> nicely. Are you still entertained by it? Because it's a bit like being the voiceover for Big Brother, isn't it? You have to sit and watch hours of it to kind of get a feel of who the people are. Yeah, you, you, I, yeah, I am still entertained by it because, uh, you know, I, I, I do sit in a darkened booth and watch the programme and read out my script. But that's why there's a, a bit of ad-libbing goes on because you've got to keep yourself entertained and keep yourself sane. So there's a lot of really filthy, horrible things left on the cutting room floor, to be honest. <laughs> and what about, how do I say this, Dave? Uh, what about being a sex symbol? Because, of course, everybody loves you for this. And I know they like to Google you, don't they? Well, you know, they may well do. But, um, yeah, sex symbol, I think that's pushing it a little bit too far, maybe. But it's uh, it's quite it's gratifying that people like it, and that's that's brilliant. But I'm sure equally there are people out there who hate it, and that's why I try, try to avoid Facebook, because I don't think I could take the, uh, the harsh criticism. And it still seems to be current, and it's not faded off. I mean, that's the worry with a programme like this. It'll be OK for about three minutes, and then we'll all get bored. But people are still coming back. I think that's partly down to the fact that it's not on every day forever, forever, forever. They kind of hold back, don't they? And then put the big celeb ones on every now and again and then uh, run the weekly specials. Yeah, they do. It, 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 to be fair, it is on somewhere, probably every day of, of the year. Right? <laughs> it's on one of the on one of the digital channels. But um, yeah, it's nice. They, they, what they what what helps is that they they have a steady stream of new ones because for a while there there were a lot of repeats going out. Uh, I think people were on the point of getting a bit fed up with all the repeats, but now there's there's a lot of fresh ones being made. So uh, you know, and it's it's a really clever format. Nell Butler, who invented the format, you know, should be given some sort of award because. It's, it's so simple, and it's uh, you know it's it's vo- it appeals to the voyeur in us all. I think I think that's what's good about it. And in terms of the mockery, is there ever a line when you say, "No, I can't be that mean to that person"? Yes, yes, it does happen. It does happen. <laughs> I, I think that because the producers have spent five days with these people, uh, non-stop, really on top of each other, they can tend to be quite angry about the people involved and can put lines in that are a little bit too too much too early sometimes. So uh, okay. I do have to go, hang on, we, we don't know that we hate them yet. We can't say that. <laughs> and you do tend to find a few plonkers, don't you, along the way, many of which are radio DJs, I notice. They don't go down very well on your programme. <laughs> 
Oh, I don't know. I think there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of people who have a there's a sizable gap between what they think of themselves and what the rest of the world thinks of them, and the, that gap is where the fun happens. And there are a lot of people more than happy to jump in with two feet into mm. that chasm between those two positions you've got to be very careful especially when you look like me um, I'm sat here quite anonymous just doing the radio show going on a show like that you really do expose yourself and yep. I don't think people realise how vulnerable you can be because filmed over such a long period hour after hour after hour you have to let your guard down don't you and that's when you edit in those bits Absolutely. I mean, you, you, you've got to realise that the cameras are going to be rolling for a large amount of the time. And, you know, a lot of the footage is, you can't, you've got to, you're cu cutting down from something like 100 hours to 30 minutes. So, you know, you're not going to be able to necessarily get yourself across in the way that you want to get mm. yourself across, because it's not all about you. It's about the dynamic of the people. And of course, yeah. you've had a past. Your, your whole life hasn't been centred around come dine with me. Um, one of the <laughs> things you, although it does feel like. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that I do love that you were on was 2D TV. Uh, bring that oh, yeah. back. I presume it's too expensive now to bring back because it was clever. Well, I think so, but it's also, I think people are after the 3D version now. I think 2D TV, they've decided, is too, too fewer Ds. Um, but no, I think that, that's all done now. But that was good fun while we did it. That was, a, that was excellent fun. I'm just looking at my producer's notes. You ran a cheese shop, is that? No, no. no you, it's not you a cheese shop. You had a radio shop. show called The Cheese I Shop. Was a, yes, I was in a sketch, uh, a sketch <laughs> team called The Cheese Shop, and uh, we did four series on Radio 4. But I didn't, I didn't run a cheese shop, although maybe we should have done. We might have been more successful than that. <laughs> And in terms of your face, that face, that face, um, are you kind of upset that we don't know who you are? Because you are a whopping star, but, but kind of anonymous at the same time. I'm, that's lovely. You know, that's how I, that's, I'd like to keep it like that. That's very, it's very nice. Not, mm. you know, just sort of not, nobody knowing who you are. Uh, particularly as you're quite nasty to, about quite a lot of people. So you don't want them coming up to you and taking issue with it, really. Do they ever get to meet you? Has anybody come up who's been on the show that you've said nasty things about and they've got their own back? No, although I once did an interview on the radio, as we're doing, and, and they had someone, a contestant, in the studio and said, and here he is, Mike, I think his name was, and uh, that, that was a potentially hairy moment, but he was quite pleased, even though I'd, been, I'd said some quite rude things about him. He, he seemed to take it all in the spirit in which it's meant. I don't, it's not meant to be nasty. It's kind of poking fun, I think, in a, good, in a kind of nice way, I hope. And in terms of the act you do on that programme, there is a certain voice you use, isn't there? I can't imagine yeah. the big brother man in the same way walks around with that ridiculous accent all day. Um, <laughs> how do you do it then? Is there a certain way of talking the way you do on the programme? Yeah, I mean, it's very different. I mean, it's it's the voiceover has become so camp now, it's virtually out of control. I, I don't know where it's heading, to be honest. But uh, I don't know where it comes from either, to be honest. But, um, yeah, it's very different. It's very different. It's very loud, for one thing. And it's quite an effort to sustain it for five hours while I'm uh, recording. So. I love it, especially when you do those things. Oh, look at him. He's got his nose in Jacob's <laughs> Creek. You know, it's just, <laughs> you can't get yeah. enough of that. Those are the bits I enjoy. That's, that's fun. That's, that is good fun. Oh, that. he's brought out his cheesy puffs. You know, <laughs> oh, there's always okay. a line everywhere, yeah. isn't there? Hey, no, listen, it's absolutely. lovely to talk to you today. And this new DVD that it's out now, it's called Come Dine With Me, The Tasty Bits. Um, it is, what, yes. Tell me about your tasty bits then. Well, my tasty bits, I, I, I don't know about my tasty bits, but the, the DVD is, uh, it's excellent. I was a bit surprised when they said they were going to do a DVD, thinking, how's that going to work? But you sit down and it's a really good watch. It's, it's a bit of an assault. It's a sort of bombardment of these all the funny bits. But it's, it's really good. It's really funny. And I think it's well, it's a great stocking filler. Dave, love talking to you. Thanks so much for coming on the programme today. Dave Lamb is the big star of Come Dine With Me. Always good to watch on Channel 4. And the new DVD is called The Tasty Bits, and it's out now. Good to talk to you. Thanks, Alex. Bye-bye.